Welcome to another edition of An Artifactual Journey. I'm your host, Phil J. Merrill, and today, every day I'm excited, but today I'm really excited because we're, we're talking about an a underreported and undervalued topic, which happens to be Black inventors. And I'd like to introduce my guest today, and his name is, go right ahead, sir. James Howard. Who are you and what do you do? <laughs> I'm the executive director of Black Inventors Hall of Fame Museum, uh, located up in uh, Wharton, New Jersey. And, and we present to the general populace a untold story of over 400 years of inventive genius on behalf of Black inventors, uh, past and present. Did I hear that correctly? You said over 400 years? 400 years, man, indeed. I never heard of you or your organization. I knew of some of your potential board members, but I was really impressed with what I saw on a social, uh, on a social media platform, uh, LinkedIn, I'll give them a plug. So I reached out to you and I was delighted that you um, accepted my request. And I started looking over some of your great work and I said, well, let me just let him know who Nanny Jack and Company is and, and try to tease him with a few things that we have. And the two topics that I teach you about, this is an original handwritten letter from none other than Henry E. Baker. Wow. And it even up at the top left-hand corner in 1915, it's saying Department of the Interior, United States Patent Office, and it's giving his room number in his own handwriting, room 232. I think I need to go play that as a lottery number. What do you think, uh, 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 What do you think? Indeed, indeed, indeed. That's quite an impressive artifact you oh, got. Okay. okay, but this this I'm is just the tip of the iceberg. I never heard of Henry Baker until I acquired this collection um, mm -hmm. in the late 90s. And I knew of Baker more so from being a community activist, um, uh, a power broker, a power player in both Black DC and Black Virginia, because mm -hmm. he was a part of the founding institution, uh, the founding group of the Manassas Industrial Colored School yep. in Manassas, Virginia. He's listed as the treasurer of this segregated uh, school that is today a role model of success that not enough people know about. And his uh, address was 609. F Street, Northwest DC. Now, we have letters from him from the 1890s up until um, World War One. That's scary. That's... That, 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 that is scary. And, and of course, we get to see the mixture of his personal side, his wife, who's at the Library of Congress as a librarian, and we get to learn about how he is so far reaching in uplifting the black community in ways that we don't know about. Um, so the other thing I wanted to tease you with, and then we'll just focus on Baker and what you know and what you're doing, is that in the early 90s, I sat for hours at an auction to get two original patents. Okay. I never heard of the man. And obviously in the early 90s, I don't know what you were doing, but I think both of us, <laughs> both of us had a full head of hair. Can we agree to that? <laughs> Yes. I think we both did have a full head of head at that time. Yes. Okay, and, and no gray at that time as well, correct? <laughs> and no gray. Uh, okay. I don't think I had gray. No. Okay, good. So <laughs> we, we have two things working for us. Um, so I sat there, and of course, I was the only person that bid on these two original patents from James W. Childs. Wow. Um, one patent is from uh, Pennsylvania, another one is from DC. One is for heated windshield wipers. Mm -hmm. And another one is for a clock. And I said, okay, I'll just sit on this. So now we're in 2022 and I actually have found a really good uh, collaboration, which is to somehow be connected to your groundbreaking work with the Black Inventors Hall of Fame Museum, correct? Yes, so yes. Why not let you just go on and do what you do? Take it away. <laughs> Wow. Well, you know, you, you lay quite a bit on me. I just want to make um, a comment about the significance of Henry Baker. Okay. Uh, you know, he was uh, not the first Black patent attorney, uh, but yet he was the most prolific. Correct. Uh, the absolute uh, most prolific in the sense of uh, his reach uh, and like other past Black inventors, 
uh, he was empathetic, not just to the cause of innovation, but to the cause of the people in general. You know, I think back to, for instance, to an inventor that would have preceded him, Thomas Jennings, our very first black inventor, and how much significance he placed on other causes, you know, concerning abolition and things of that nature. Well, Henry Baker was just as empathetic uh, to these types of causes. And so he was the first um, African-American patent attorney that, that, that really spoke um, on our behalf, you know, and, and kept copious notes on, on the inventive presence of, uh, of inventors, uh, particularly uh, African-American inventors. So for you to have that letter is just, to me, whew, man, breathtaking. <laughs> well, it, it, yeah. it is. And you have to understand that because it was a part of such a huge uh, collection of letters from one family coming out of enslavement in Kentucky, connected mm -hmm. to Berea College, where Dr. Uh, Carter G. Woodson uh, uh, graduated from, um, it kind of got overshadowed in the larger perspective of the stories that I've been trying to tell with regard to this one family. Yeah. But, when you start isolating various aspects of the collection, there's sub collections and sub stories and the, 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 the powerfulness of this husband and wife in the late 1890s, early 1900 DC yeah. and all yeah. that they are involved in speaks volumes. And I, I try to, in some cases say that way a hundred years before Barack and Michelle Obama were, were running <laughs> DC, guess what? Henry and Henry Violetta and Henry were, were running Black DC because he's connected yeah. to the financial world. He's connected yes. to the educational world, the yes. inter world, the yes. military world. I mean, so yes. when you talk about how we need to dig deeper and go down these rabbit holes to lift up other uh, ancestors, Henry yeah. Baker and wife definitely should be at the top of a list. Well, you know, yes, I agree. They are such a repository of information. And this is in the, you know, the 20th century. But the truth of the matter is that backtracking of information that they sort of committed themselves to, as well as the present state of, of innovation, which they were part of, because uh, the bulk of their work uh, in, in that respect um, was sort of like towards the tail end of the innovative era, what we call the golden era. Of yes, the yes. So he had such an opportunity to record and he has such a commitment to record and amass, uh, you know, literally to just track our contributions to, um, to innovation in this country. I don't think anyone uh, did it more thoroughly and uh, prior, certainly not during, and I don't think anyone has done this as, as thoroughly since as he and his wife did. Uh, I, 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 love, I love what you're saying. And you're, you're making me backtrack in my own um, memory because again, I've been working on this Woodford Family Collection archive mm -hmm. since 1997, 98. Um, and we first meet his wife in the 1880s mm, yeah. where she is writing to a formerly enslaved uh, gentleman who ultimately ends up being employed at the Manassas Industrial School in the 90s. Mm -hmm. See, so um, the, the, our own network, we often talk about the old boy network, but <laughs> it's really important to, to share that we had our, our own network that wasn't just tied into the Underground Railroad. Yes. And, yes. and so his wife, Violetta, had a love of books in the 1880s. And she is going back and forth discussing a book with her formerly enslaved friend, Edward Hitchcock Woodford. And um, that's the entree into Henry Baker offering him the principalship of the Manassas Industrial Colored School. So we have countless letters that Baker is talking about all kinds of activities uh, in Virginia and DC that the public has never seen because they're sitting privately in our archives. One of the other commitments that, that Baker had was really on chronically the, the, the innovative side of African-American inventors, you know, writing it down, really showing a, a passion for their trail because he was fully conscious 
of that trail that started, you know, hundreds of years prior, you know, that, that trail that started from the Jennings times to the Julia Reed times, who signed her name with an X, by the way, as you know, you know, to all of the early Sarah Booms and Sarah Good, you know, uh, here's a man and his wife that was truly committed to not just perfecting the craft of examining uh, patents and doing due diligence, but also uh, paying close attention to the, to the narrative of Black invention, innovative African-Americans whom at the time from both the past of prior to abolition and even post abolition, who had continued to be, in my estimation, profuse in their innovative prowess. Little known fact, during the time of the golden era, there were over 55,000 patents, right? Applied for on behalf of African-Americans. Wait a minute, you said 55,000? Yes, yes. So Henry Baker and his wife would have been very busy <laughs> just trying to keep track of, of all of that. We have, listen, Philip, we have always been a prolific community. Yes, of people. yes. We, we truly have. I believe it's in our DNA, right? I do too. I do too. So Amen. we can track from 1721 when Onesimus introduced the concept of vaccines through the inoculation process that saved the city of Boston from the ravages of smallpox to 1821 when Thomas Jennings was first issued his, his very first uh, patent as, a, as an African-American representing the first patent ever issued to an African-American. And what was so significant in that moment also, Philip, was that he has an additional document, and this would be a great artifact to have, right? that actually identifies him as a citizen of the United States. And even Frederick Douglass spoke to how significant that was in that moment. They have a black man in that moment on the north, south, east, or west of this country identified as a citizen of the United States, right? So you fast forward 1721, 1821, then you get to 1921 where you're in the hearts of the Garrett Morgans, you know, and then the post era of Elijah Woods, and, and, and you got, you know, all these doctors and scientists inventing. So we attach 1921, which I can assure you will be tons and tons of different types of patents. And then you fast forward to 2021 and we have our sister April Erickson. Now listen to this. I'm listening, I'm listening. Who was assigned, she's a NASA aerospace engineer and she was assigned one of the patents on CubeSat. Okay, now CubeSat, just recently made additional news just yesterday. What? When you heard about this notion of them sending this object yes. to hit, right? This asteroid right. or what have you? Well, yeah. that object was being guided by CubeSat, which is basically the camera that helps to guide this, uh, this object to its destination. And uh, Pril Erickson, this sister, NASA aerospace engineer, she led the team in the development of CubeSat, and she was so honored when her name went on the patent. Can you mm -hmm. imagine that? So we go 17, I mean, uh, 1721, 1821, 1921, 2021, and you just have a wealth, a plethora of innovation that Henry Baker himself would be so proud of because he pretty much laid the ground rules for recording and identifying and, and giving the due diligence with his uh, copious note taking, uh, the due hey, diligence hey, to just how creative we are. You're blowing my mind with this information. How, how, how is this going to be played forward in the physical structure that, that your group is working on? Well, what we want to do is lend more than just lip service, obviously. I think in, in videos and in recordings, these two in and of themselves become somewhat artifactual but we wanna have a base. We wanna have a place, right? Because when, when you have a place that as an edit, when you occupy public space, it matters, okay? okay. Yeah. Yes. And, and it is this edit air of importance. So we're gonna have a brick and mortar museum in Newark, New Jersey. And if all goes well, we'll be opening somewhere in early 25. And in uh, 2025, and then, I mean, that's, yes, that's, yes, that's knocking 25. on the door. We're knocking on the door. 
<laughs> yes, it is. And architectural speak is knocking on the door precisely. So we've enacted uh, a couple of plans. One, one of the biggest benefits along that journey is that we've had the pleasure of meeting you. Oh, cut right? it out, cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. <laughs> and, and, and two, uh, we've engaged in a capital campaign to align ourselves with the right sorts of donors down line. But right now, most important to us, Philip, is developing a very strong endorsement profile. So right now I'm going after the likes of US PTO, National Inventors Hall of Fame. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm going after the US IPA of which I am a member, the National Academy of Inventors of which I am a member. So hmm. all of these innovative related sources, I am getting to back me with letters of endorsement. And with that strong endorsement profile, I think it'll be an easy sell when I start to approach uh, large donors to uh, that. That's absolutely fabulous. So, how can the public that's uh, watching and listening to this reach out to you or your organizational members? If uh, to to learn more about uh, Black Inventors Hall of Fame, I would encourage them to simply go to byhoff.org. That's b i h o f dot org. And on the very first page, you will have a pop-up that can take you directly to the museum to learn more about the museum and even how they can uh, help contribute uh, to the cause and donate. Okay, I, I think I think that's phenomenal. And, and naturally, um, whatever little connections or pieces that we can bring to the table, please include us in the effort um, with this um, uh, groundbreaking, cutting-edge uh, initiative with your with your museum um we appreciate that again i don't know what i can do but whatever i can do you know please count me in and uh count my company's name as a uh, as a, a supporter i got a surprise for you that just i just realized um recently my family's good friends with dr valerie laverne thomas mm. do you know her name oh yes oh yes She's in my gallery. She's okay. in the uh, Inventors Gallery on the Byhoff website. And so a couple of weeks ago, she was on the phone with my mom. No kidding. Because they go way back. Wow. Isn't and, that something? And so one day uh, when I, we were still living in Baltimore, we were driving downtown by, uh, by the War Memorial Plaza by City Hall. And this lady with this long lioness mane of hair was walking across the street. And we had to stop and honk because it was Valerie. I'll be done. So years ago, I had enough uh, vision to get her business card and get her to autograph it for me back right. in the day. Of course, so we have that. So I just thought I would uh, tease you with that bit of uh, uh, inventor history. Well, would you mind if I uh, double down on what you're saying? Oh, by all means. That's what we do, brother. Come on, double down. Uh, Mitz Thomas is uh, one of the... Uh, individuals in which uh, my board and I are taking under consideration for induction into our Hall of Fame uh, ceremony, which will be taking place in Atlanta in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And I am just so enamored with the work that she has done yes, right, yes. and the contributions that she has done yes. in that whole relationship in space of 3D, yes. right? Optical yes. illusions. Yes. Her work has just expanded so prolifically, and this is what you have to understand. Our creative genius has had tangible, what we call tentacles of outreach yes. into so many areas. So when you talk about Valerie Thompson, you're talking about outreach into the virtual goggles world. You're talking about the outreach into IMAX, right? You're right, talking right. about the outreach into this, this whole 3D sphere uh, that, that went a way above and beyond anyone's imagination. And she, along with Dr. Shirley Jackson, uh, who contributed so mightily to everything from ID phone calls to fax machines and everything, is that creative genius, it's that seed of creative genius that doesn't just stay at this point of, of development. It expands, it has tentacles, it has outreach that helps to shape industries uh, across the board. So. Yes, uh, uh, I am so delighted to know that you know her personally. I'm attempting to acquire a very rare photograph of Alexander Miles. Yes. And could you tell the public 
Uh, and see, you have to understand, and I'm guilty of this at times as well. When you throw out acronyms, when you throw out names, you live in that space 24-7, 365. Yeah. Many of our audience members have not a clue what in God's kingdom is Brother James <laughs> talking about, okay? So you have to peel back that, those onions and you give know, us a brother. layer at a time. So in, in simple term, in layman's terms, mm -hmm. who, who was or who is or why should we be excited about okay. Alexander Miles? You ought to be excited about this brother for a few reasons. One, at his height of an invention out of Minnesota, he was, in fact, Minnesota's richest Black American. Okay? Say that again. Say, wait a minute. He Say was that Minnesota's again. richest Black American, okay, at his point of invention. And he had invented a product that absolutely revolutionized the elevator industry, right? His was the very first automatic door opener that not only uh, automatically opened, and closed, okay, to make it much safer for, for you know, egress and ingress through elevators. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those that get very little uh, applause for his efforts, but the truth of the matter is his engineering efforts superseded anything that had been done prior and the basic mechanics of his contraption, of his design, is still being applied to this very day, okay? In 2022, it's still being yes, utilized? Yes, even to this very day, man. Yes, indeed. You know, it's been supplanted by a lot of, <laughs> interesting enough, it's been supplanted by some of the very technology that perhaps Valerie had, had utilized in her 3D optimization of imagery and so forth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but the truth of the matter is the very core of the sensitivity of automatic opening, not just of the door, but the shaft as well, making it, extra safe for um, going in and out of these doors. I can't wax poetically enough about the significance of his contributions to that industry. Uh, it just helped, you know, from Otis to Schindler to every major player, not just in this country, but worldwide, his technology was applied. He was a pillar in that uh, community. And like I say, the richest, you know, we don't get that title too often. We got, um, we apply it to Madam C.J. Walker and the work yes. that she did in the hair care industry. I happen to know of another entrepreneur, female, uh, right here in the uh, Newark called Louisa Scott, who too was in the hair care industry. And she was regarded as the first black female millionaire in New Jersey, uh, Louisa Scott. How, uh, how, how about Sarah Washington of Apex? <laughs> Sarah Washington, I mean, there, like I say, so many have just yes. accomplished and we have these untold stories and this is getting back to Henry Baker. This is why it is so important to record these stories, to have these copious notes, to, to be able to write it down, safeguard it and, and continue to deliver it. And this is what I want the museum to be. I want the museum back in Venice Hall of Fame, Museum and STEAM Learning Center to serve as a repository of accurate information. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you know, within our community. And if I can just wax very quickly about another area where we're, we're not served properly, and this is why your, your photo acquisition of Alexander Mouse would be so important. Far too often, our images are shared in a sense that we don't quite know who to attach an image to. I've even seen Henry Baker's image apply, all right, to other black inventors, okay? Yes. I have seen preach, brother preach, preach. I've seen Alexander Miles image, you know, confused with Nobel Rollo, the inventor of the sugar refinery. They don't even you look know? the same. They, they don't they don't look the same to me. <laughs> I've seen listen, I'm telling but you know this is this misinformation yes. uh, and the reliance that too much reliance that we place, you know, within the, the internet space. So our job brothers like yourself and myself and others will be to make sure that though this information is easily accessible, we want it to be proper in its delivery. And this is what keeps me up at night, trying okay. to figure out I, I, whether I, I, or not I, 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 Jesse Blunt and Marie Van Bitten Brown happen to be identical twin sisters because you see their face used interchangeably all the Time. Okay, so so to dovetail on what you're saying, um, we have a red carpet visit of Edward Boucher. Mm -hmm. 
and he gets misidentified on uh, the in the internet all the time. All the time. I'm and not so, surprised. I, um, every now and then we put up the authentic carte de visite of him that we have uh, mm -hmm. to make sure people understand that this is who he is and he's not to be confused with um, Richard Greener or anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as we wrap this up, I, I just wanted to go back to Baker for a minute. Mm -hmm. and, and in the edited version, you'll really get to see Baker has some fascinating penmanship. Um, wow. Because we have literally thousands of letters from different collections across the country, I, we pay quite a bit of attention to penmanship. Wow. Um, and, and Baker's is distinctive, uh, as is his wife. That's so, scary. And, and I think some of that should go back to his early education. Um, when you look at who was um, in his class, who was teaching him and what he was learning and how he, he uh, progressed through those earlier phases. But nonetheless, um, without seeing Baker's name, I could find letters and tell you that that is his penmanship because I've studied so many of his sentences, words, and his nuances with his uh, penmanship. Brother, I, I envy you. I really do. Uh, no, no, me. bro. No, come on now. Come on. He, <laughs> he was the third uh, Naval Academy uh, officer. Yes, yes. And so I misspoke. He, was, he wasn't the first Naval Academy officer. He was the third Naval Academy officer, but he was, in fact, the first uh, significant uh, Black patent attorney. Uh, and I don't think we've had one since. We have a modern-day version of him, uh, sister, I believe you would know, uh, now retired, Pat Sluby. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Spent uh, many a years as a patent examiner for the USPTO. Outstanding, outstanding person. Yes, yes. But we got to give our due credit. Uh, one of a kind, first of a kind, and just a remarkable individual, um, in spite of the fact that occasionally will confuse his image with some other Black and business images. So really, in wrapping this up, Aren't you also a uh, big time inventor? Yeah, actually I have 20 inventions, uh, about 20, 21 inventions uh, of which the majority reside in the medical or medicinal space. And um, yeah. So at another time, we need to come back and revisit uh, some of the great work that the Black Inventors Hall of Fame are doing in their progress. And of course we could bring out some other secrets that I haven't shared with you about uh, Black inventors that I'm sure will have your eyes blinking some more. I will wait eagerly. Okay, so this has been my pleasure talking to James Howard, who is a dynamo in many facets. Please visit, uh, give me the, the plug, mm -hmm. your plug. That's uh, B-I-H-O-F dot org. Okay, that's it. It's been a real, uh, in the words of Don Cornelius, it's been a stone cold blast. My pleasure, my friend.